So the Clemson Tiger basketball season ended much of the way the season went for the first 30 games. Great play in the second half down the stretch, but not quite enough to make a difference as they lose to Florida State in their first ACC game, trailing by 20 in the second half. They come all the way back but fall short against the Florida State Seminoles. We bring in Ryan Cantor of Shig in the Southland to, to break down this game and the entire season. Ryan, Florida State had this game in command. Nine minutes left. Clemson makes this furious comeback, and it may have come down to just a rotation of the basketball dropping one way or the other, but it didn't go the Tigers' way. Yeah, Cle Clemson, uh, they struggled early. They, they tend to struggle with Florida State size. They've got a lot of great size in the front line, um, and, and, they're, and that really works against Clemson star player Jerome Blossom game, who's just a little bit undersized to power forward. So they tend to struggle against them. This is actually their second loss to Florida State now. And uh, they, they, towards the, what we, what we refer to as the third quarter, which is that first 10 minutes out of halftime, sometimes that's a problem time for Clemson, and it was in this game. Uh, they fell behind. They got as far behind as 20 points, as you mentioned. And uh, that's when Clemson called a timeout, and they really regrouped. Really, the game was more or less over at that point. At least that's what it, you know the casual or really anybody would think at that point. Um, but they battled back. They got it to within a reasonable margin. And in the final seven minutes and nine seconds, Rod Hall had 17 points. And it was really just so close to being a legacy game for him. He was playing with a hurt shoulder. It was really something special. They cut it to within two. That's right when you first start believing that they could actually pull it off. And then he missed a floater that he had been knocking down for the, during that whole stretch. So they fell just a bit short, and that'll probably be it for the season. So again, Ryan, the last game becomes a bit of a microcosm of the entire season. 31 games played, you win 16, a lot of head-scratching losses, a lot of unexpected wins along the way. Yeah, this has been a roller coaster of a season if there ever was one. This team is incredibly inconsistent, largely because they're, in, they're inconsistent shooting. They lost to Gardner-Webb, they lost to Winthrop. Um, one of the worst losses was to Rutgers, a team that actually finished um, outside of the top 200, according to Ken Palm rankings. Um, they lost that game on turnovers, um, and, and that after that loss, they were 4-3 and three and, and really pretty much done as far as um, – any sort of NCAA hunt that just seven games into the year, so that was that was a tough one to swallow. They, they picked up some great wins as well, so that's what makes it so up and down. They beat Arkansas, who was very good. They beat LSU, who was very good. Um, one of the one of the most enjoyable wins was beating Syracuse. They they had started 0-2 in ACC play. They uh, went on the road and beat Pittsburgh. They finally had you believing, and then they lost to Virginia, which was somewhat you know acceptable given who Virginia is. They came back home. They were underdogs against Syracuse, and they just thoroughly outplayed them in the first half. They struggled again in that third quarter, that first 10 minutes out of halftime, but they won the game down the stretch. Really, Rakeem Christmas was the only Syracuse player that was effective at all in that game, and Rod Hall completely blanketed Trevor Cooney, who didn't make a field goal in the entire game. So that was probably the highlight of the year, um, but it was a very, very up-and-down season. So, Ryan, they play in a stacked ACC that's arguably the best conference in America. Uh, Notre Dame, Louisville, and Syracuse included. We don't know what's going to happen with the Orange uh, in the next few years, but still, obviously, the power structure in the ACC, extremely strong. Uh, what, what are your hopes for this program going forward? Well, next season, Clemson will be playing their games in Greenville, South Carolina, as their new, um, as little John Coliseum gets a major renovation. So that'll so that pose some challenges. But really, the team should improve over the next two years. They lose Rod Hall, which is definitely big, and they lose to Marcus Harrison at shooting guard. But they bring in Ty Hudson, and they really and, and he'll he'll, um, he'll be probably be a backup at point guard. Avery Holmes comes off off the one year wait from transfer um, from San Francisco, and so immediately they're going to have a shooter in Avery Holmes. Everyone else is going to get a year older, a year more mature. What they really need is Landry Noko to continue to progress. Um, as a sophomore, he was very good and showed so much promise. And then he really took a step back this year. And that was one of the biggest reasons that I think my own predictions and predictions from other people on our staff were wrong, because we really thought that Landry Noko would be one of the very best centers in the ACC. And he just struggled to stay out of foul trouble and, and really didn't progress from a season ago. So we'll need that for him to get better. We'll also need Jerome Blossom game to continue to play at a high level. And Dante Grantham, who is our biggest recruit in the entire Brown, uh, um, Brown out era, he's going to have to improve. He showed a lot of promise early in the year, stagnated a bit late. He's going to have to get, 
to take a step forward and be one of Clemson's best players if they're going to do anything next year. And I'll, I'll just close with this. As, uh, you know, this is a very disappointing year. We certainly didn't accomplish the goals we wanted to. Due to Brownell's very large buyout, which is $5 million, you know, he's not going anywhere. He's not on the hot seat. And really, he's got two years to get us back to the NCAA tournament. Um, after that, a lot of the players will be seniors departing. There'll be a young squad coming back, and his buyout will drop. So the next two years are going to be really, really crucial for him and this program. Good stuff. Ryan Cantor of Shaking the Southland, breaking down Clemson basketball for 2014 and 15. Ryan, as always, we appreciate it. Thank you very much.